You know, I was just sitting there thinking, I told you guys the other day, you have to get used to people moving in and moving out. The long and short of the story is, the village just has an average that every villager home owner buys three homes in their lifetime here in the villages. I got my theory about how that works. Hope that wind ain't getting in your way. I'm sitting outside in my golf cart and it just got done raining like crazy. When you first come to the villages and Sue and I are, are this is us. You end up buying a smaller home to come down here on vacations or and you rent it out in the winter time. So the, usually the courtyard villas or the patio villas are the thing that you get because they're easy to take care of. They're not expensive to take care of. Then you retire full time. You come down here and you have a patio villa or the courtyard villa that you can live in full time. There's nothing wrong with them. But you'll decide like me, one, the golf cart garage isn't there. It's only a one car garage and a golf cart. That's what it's not a car and a half, like people say. It's a car and plus golf cart. And usually that section in the garage for the golf cart generally is just an area wide enough to nose it in and that's it. So you decide you need something bigger. You move on to house number two. Now, as years goes by, house number two, one of you pass away. The person left a lot of the times decides the house is too big and too much for them to take care of because they've lost half of that income with when their partner passed away or a big majority of it. So thus they end up going back to a smaller home like a patio villa. Now I was saying that's true every time, but that's, that's my scenario of it about how it works. I do know that in my neighborhood, I know of at least a couple of people they come down here and they bought their first home. And you have it in your head that you want to get something big. Because, well, that's the way America is. Bigger the better. Big car, big house, big everything, right? So they buy a big home. They stretch their budget as far as it could go. Now they find out this brand new home needs to be updated. Our boy said buying a brand new home here in the villages is going to be the most expensive brand new fixer upper that you'll buy. Carpets come out, tile floor comes in. All the different things that you can imagine you can do inside the house, they have to do it. On top of that, they just bought this $500,000 house or $600,000 house or even more. And they're putting money in it. So they bought a great big house to maintain, take care of, have a swimming pool put in the backyard, all this kind of stuff. And then they just realize by spending all their money in the house, they don't really have the money they really need to travel and do some of the things they'd like to do. So they need to downsize and they downsize to a smaller home to put money in the bank to be able to travel and do other things they want to do. One of them passes away, the other one downsizes even more and goes into a smaller home like a patio villa. Now that's just my scenario on things. Nothing here is written in stone, but these are things that I have seen with my own eyes. Sue and I started out in the patio villa. I worked full time and I always said, if you'll go back to my earliest videos that the patio villa uh, I knew would not be a place that I was gonna live full time, you can, but I knew I wasn't going to. I always said it was a place to hang my hat when a day came and I had to come down here. And it was, and it worked out perfect for that. And we moved on to this house. We actually had house number three already picked out before we took that trip out to California, right before COVID hit. And when we came back, house number three had jumped up in price by $100,000. To me and Sue, that is significant. And I'm not financing a house. That's just me, I'm not doing it. So we decided, eh, what we got, it's ours, it's here. We've got a lot of upgrading uh, grades that we've done. We're happy with it. Is it perfect? No. There's no house here that's gonna be perfect. There's always sacrifices. There's always trade-offs. Uh, uh, if you find that perfect home, God bless you because I don't think anybody else has ever found that perfect home. You try to make it as perfect as you can. Perfect? No. But getting back to what I originally come out here for, after explaining that little bit of story there, my rambling there, I'm going to go down just my block, my street, not the whole neighborhood of 600 and some houses. Uh, I might show you a little bit of my neighborhood my neighborhood. But I'm going to show you how many homes on my street that the original buyer, after I, I moved in here in 2014, the bank told me I was the first one to actually buy the home, but I do know I was not the first one to move in. And I'm taking the bank word on that being the first home to actually, or yeah, being the first buyer here. So I've been here since this neighborhood before it was even open. I mean, they were still building homes here. There was still piles of dirt everywhere. 
So I've seen how neighborhoods grow and how big they get and how fast they do grow. But since 2014, of the homes just on my street, I'm going to show you how many of them that the original owners still live in them and how many of them are gone. Ready to go for that ride? Let's go. As they used to say back in my younger days, this is our Ponderosa. This is my Pondy. Okay, we're going to start right here at the edge of my street, which is right here. As you can see, I'm right here on the, on the edge of this cul-de-sac back here. Which The cul-de-sac actually ain't part of my street, but anyway, this house right here on the left is the new people. The original uh, owner of that house moved over to, uh, Osce not Osceola Hills, moved over to uh, Pine Hills. This house right here is not the original. This house right here, next door to me, is not the original. This house right here across the street, not original. Uh, that one there is owned by Canadians, not original. And that house right there 
is not original. The guy that owned that house uh, sold it. I think he decided it was too big and he moved down to the village of Finney. So there's a lot of reasons why people move. Believe it or not, divorce is one of them. And there's some other things. Too big, house too small. I want a different design. I like this area better than that area. There's just a lot of different reasons. So just since 2014, everybody on my street, literally, is not the original owner. I'm the only original owner left. Just saying. So there you go. A little information you might think about when you move into a neighborhood. You talk about making friends and all that. They're all temporary. Either they're going to move out of the neighborhood eventually in a new neighborhood, or they're going to die. <laughs>